from the Fatheads Eyewear Studio in Indianapolis, Indiana, this is The Skinny. Maybe I need to start in the trash truck business. <laughs> Don't rule it out. But the steering spokes on the wheel straight ahead. The steering's broken. Bridges takes the wheel and he goes, whoa, whoa. He's airborne and then I'm above him. And uh, all at the same time. Yeah, you're just like, wow, that's a wild picture. He gets behind the race car and he tells me if I'm good or not. And if I'm good, he'll go, perfect. <laughs> I hang up on the guy. I go, who's this? This is Deion Sanders. I go, yeah, nice try. See you later. Bounce and then this insane roll. That thing sent it. I, I hate cold fire. It's the worst. It's literally the worst thing you could ever do. But I'm smooth and creamy like milk chocolate. <laughs> Have you ever not saw a Hershey bar that did not look good? I am Tony Stewart. I'm Mario Andretti. I'm Johnny Rutherford. I'm Angel Sampe. I'm Travis Petrano. This is Antron Brown. Hi, I'm RJ Johnson, and this is The Skin. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Fat Heads Eyewear Studio. We're here in Indianapolis, Indiana, for another round of The Skinny. I'm Ken Stout, Rico Elmore, sitting right alongside. We have RJ Johnson in the set with us. I did not say R.J. Anderson, but it's coming. And then, of course, we have Michael Young here as well, who has me counting down from four today because he's struggling to turn camera three on. The struggle bus. <laughs> All good here, man. We look forward to it. Always having a good time here in the studio. Great to have R.J. with us. You are in from Arizona, yep. one-time sprint car midget guy, and uh, wasn't aware of it. As I said before, I was doing some homework, and there's a few R.J. Johnsons out there, apparently, but um, I thought your father had possibly won a late model championship, but you said seven-time sprint car champion. Yeah, he's won uh, seven sprint car championships. He's won a midget championship, and then he actually won an IMCA modified as well. He was pretty accomplished uh, in the state of Arizona. Awesome. Um, I'm guessing that's where it all started, huh? Yeah, for me, yeah. Yeah, it, kind of one of those. We only ran two years together before – I stepped into the full-time role with the only car. Yeah, um, and, and it looks like you've done really well. Certainly that southwest region, you've you've drawn a bunch of that stuff out there. I know currently running um, USAC CRA, but a six-time southwest champ uh, there in the sprint car, and then a fair amount of ASCS stuff as well, correct? Yeah, we've. it's kind of whatever the sanctioning body's been out there. It's kind of changed from USAC, ASCS. Uh, you know, now they got – the racetrack has their own individual series, which we've won the last, I think, three in a row out there, even that. So, it, you know. It, when you say three in a row, three races? Championships. championships yeah. Championship. Okay. So, and what track? Uh, the last few years, it's mainly been at uh, Central Arizona Raceway in Casa Grande. And then we venture off, you know, with that series uh, up in Sholo, Arizona or Yuma, something like that. But, you know, th for us, we try to venture off even more. That's when we throw in the occasional C-Ray race and head on over to California and hit as many 410 races as we could. So I know uh, I picked, picked you up at CSI over there, and uh, I guess that's part of the reason you're in town. And then on the way over here from there, you actually had good things to say about this guy. How did, how did that all come about? Did you lose a bet or? <laughs> what guy is that? <laughs> yeah. Oh, you're talking about me? <laughs> <laughs> How'd that relationship start? Uh, I actually years ago emailed him about sponsoring me and he was honestly one of the first to kind of help me along the way, you know, and ever since then we've stayed together and talked and he's helped me and been behind me. It's, it's been awesome. You know, it, no, it's been, it's been great. I mean, we, we've, uh, we always stay in contact and we help him out as much as we can and he represents us well out West. And so you're doing this deal with CSI. What are you doing with them? What's the whole program there? So the, the goal end goal is to try to bring uh, shock rebuilding closer to the West Coast. You know, Jake Swanson did a great job with it, you know, but he's now relocated out there. So CSI and I kind of came together and decided that we were trying to put it back out there. to. It kinda, so people didn't have to ship stuff. They don't have to ship it as far. And, they got yeah. someone closer, um, you know, just – it gets the turnaround time a little faster when it's you know, at track not, support as well, or I, as of now, no, you know what I mean? But you never know what the future holds. You know, it's, you'll be as, parking as that car. If that's what you start doing. <laughs> I hope not. I'm not ready for that part yet, but you know, it, it's a business. You know how that works. Yeah. It, 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 it takes off, goes well, you never know what's going to happen and we'll go do what it takes. Well, when you're a business owner, you do whatever you want. So, I mean, it's fine. Right. <laughs> There's um, a really good friend of ours, our our team owner, 
when we won a championship in short course off-road, who's a silent partner in CTW Shock Dinos. Yep, that's that actually is, the dino I just bought, CTW. Well, they're out there. He's out there uh, right beside you. He's a Mesa. Oh, okay. So he's he's right there in extreme. Paul Yaw is his name. He's uh, president of Injector Dynamics and uh, extremely talented when it comes to dampers. You'd, you'd be hard-pressed to find somebody better. Um, a lot of people don't hear about him. Like I say, he's a silent partner at CTW, but his injectors is is his business and he's really good at that but his passion is dampers so he loves to do that he actually i think he tried to do suspension and dampers to make as a business at one time figured out it was much more difficult so he went down the fuel injector road and he's a development uh partner for bosch now to to give you an idea of how how good they are <clears throat> but uh would be a really good resource i'll make sure i connect you guys yeah that's there. pretty cool it's funny you say that that i just bought it you know i've had the machine probably three months now it just brand new and it, you know I, i've tried not to buy anything used with this deal i want everything new you know no excuses we have everything new latest greatest you know start it right not guessing what we have type deal rj johnson on the set with us here this week sprint car ace we'll have more with him when we come back maybe you can <laughs> come on and explain them, hey if we say it wrong it'll fire doing. him up and then we'll get him home yeah, so. i'm yeah. going on there and straighten this out <laughs> yeah the Skinny is brought to you by Fatheads Eyewear. Fatheads Eyewear, hardcore since 04. And American Coach, innovation is our life force. It's summertime in Indianapolis. We love it here, and we're bringing you another exciting edition here of The Skinny. We have R.J. Johnson on the set with us. Uh, lives out in Arizona. Does a, uh, a lot of sprint car racing, midget racing out there on the West Coast in town here to uh, build a relationship with CSI. And uh, as we documented there in, in the first segment there, it looks like you're you're digging into the damper department there. Um, that's the magic, man. Everybody's got the same horsepower. It seems like dampers are, are the big difference. Yeah, I mean, you, I've been kind of like being with Rico for a long time. I've been a long time supporter of uh, CSI with Garrett down there. And, you know, when, again, when Jake moved, that was when the contact kind of started. It was the relationship had already been going that we figured that, hey, let's take this to the next level and see if we can not only help me, but help him help him with this side of it and continue to grow. Yeah, I mean, I can't tell you how many sprint car trailers we've walked in and see, you know, you see multiple dampers, you know, hanging there, depending on what they already have pre-built and they want to change to. And if I'm not mistaken... Uh, I want to say Swindell, at, like even at the Chili Bowl, I want to say he has a dyno in his trailer yep. to go in and they'll disassemble those things, rebuild them the way they want them, build the shims and do do whatever black magic's going on inside of those dampers to to get it the way they think it should be. Yeah, I mean, that's where we've been fortunate. I, uh, I had a Maxwell dyno for a long time and we would carry it in the trailer. It was a little smaller, a little lighter. Um, but when we go somewhere like the Chili Bowl, that's... we. I just go to Garrett at CSI and, you know, let him do his job where it's, it was right. So, and again, that's why we're here this week was I was trying to learn and make sure it's the same way and everything down the line. It's a continuous process. He's put together a hell of a team. He has. He's he really a, has. Yeah. I mean, Garrett's a great guy to begin with, but I'm telling you right now, he, he has put together an unbelievable team because you walk in there, and 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 RJ's exactly right. I mean, it is like, you know, it it is it's it's quite the assembly line. So, for the fans at home that aren't familiar with CSI, fill us in. Uh, they're just an Indiana-based company owned by Garrett Andrews. Um, uh, I I don't really know too much about his background, how he got going through there, but you know, it's I, I, there's not much to say other than he's done a great job. The shocks are the most consistent shocks I myself have ever ran. You know, the customer service second to none. And what other products do they do they sell? Well, I think he owns chalk stick. Does he own? He owns uh, chalk stick torsion bars, Schroeder torsion bars, uh, pit boss jacks. Yeah, the jacks. Yeah. And then I don't know if he owns KT steering gear stuff or I is affiliated he... or somehow it's all affiliated. I'm not sure on that one because I've never honestly asked. Was oh, it all but... sprint car midget? type parts sprint car midget quarter midget yeah basically open wheel but he does i know that he was doing some stuff for um indycar too 
like during the month of May. I'm not sure exactly. Maybe we could get you on here, Garrett. Maybe, <laughs> yeah. maybe you can yeah, come yeah. on and explain. Hey, if like, we say it wrong, out it'll what fire done. him up, and then we'll get him on. Yeah, so. I'm yeah. going on there and straighten this out. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's super cool. I mean, and, and, you know, as a racer, you're always looking for those types of relationships. So if you can take a West Coast version of that, get some support for your team, and then also earn earn some of that support, that's a win-win. Yeah. Like I said, when we came together on that idea, it was I thought it was great. You know, it's – it, it's needed on the west coast there's a big open area there that there is no no good support as far as that goes you know sending everything back to indiana kind of gets lost in translation quite a bit so be, me being able to i would almost say be the middle guy a little bit between them and the customer and then you know they they can help me which translates to helping them i think it'll be good for the west coast to have that back you know like i said jake swans have been doing it been doing a great job and moved back here to pursue his racing career and I mean, he's still building shocks out here, but, you know, just I, I almost feel like with the economy, it's, it's it's hard for people to say, hey, I'm going to send these shocks all the way back to Indianapolis. Oh, yeah. You know it. And if you got one set, two sets, you mm-hmm. can't send anything away and you don't right. expect it to turn around. Right. right. Exactly. I think he's a great guy to deal with and he'll, he'll take care of it. Yeah. Shipping expenses alone. I mean, just, just it, a it, ton it, of extra money to you almost double the price by the time you get the work done. So yeah. RJ Johnson on the set with us here. He also has uh, quite a background in racing. We'll touch on that when we come back. I was always taught if you know everything, you'll never learn. Right. So well, I don't pretend to this, know anything because I, I want to learn. You're looking at a six-time Southwest Sprint Car Champ there and out of Arizona. That is R.J. Johnson has joined us here on the Fatheads Eyewear Studio. Uh, great to have you with us, man. Thanks for taking the time. Glad you're in town over there as we talked about, spending some time with CSI and, and doing some uh, some schooling over there. And much more importantly, you're you're going to go to Speed, Speed Weeks, Indiana Sprint Car Week over here. Yeah, unfortunately, it's not to drive this year, but I'm going to help one of my buddies, Stevie Sussex from Arizona. So that's kind of cool. Uh, I didn't even bring a helmet bag. You know, my thought this year was I wanted to come out and learn the shock deal and then also come out and learn a little more even for me and my race team to sit back and watch and talk to people and learn what they're doing to, you know, hopefully go back home and be a little bit better. Who's Stevie driving for? Uh, That 77 car. Um, can't think of their name. I know what you're talking about. Uh, he's the same good, car he's been driving the last few years. Yeah, they got he's, the, a, he's a good guy. They got a new DRC for him, and he he's really excited. Which for me, I'm good friends with Stevie. So when Stevie's excited, that makes me excited. That means he's going to be on the gas. It's awesome. Um, I like your approach. I mean, because when you have the helmet on, you're busy thinking about racing stuff and the track and the lines and the c- competition. You're going to be around. All of those things take away from the focus on the car. Well, when you put the helmet on, you know everything. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and you forget everything. Well, see, <laughs> you flip the stupid switch and then it's time to go. It is what it is. Well, but I know what's going on with this car. But the fact that you want to put that aside for a minute and take in some opinions and, and learn the maybe some different ways that other people are doing it, it's going to expand your thought process. Yeah, I just figure, you know, sprint car racing, the elite, for non-wing racing is right here in Indiana. And, you know, if you're going to be good, you got to beat these guys. So if you're, if you want to be good, you, you got to sometimes sit back and learn, you know, you, you, if you, I was always taught if you know everything, you'll never learn. Right. So well, I don't I pretend this, to know anything because I, I want to learn. <laughs> I heard this saying, if you think you're, if, if you think you're the smartest guy in the room, you're probably in the wrong room. Right. Right. And if you ever quit learning, you probably need to do something different. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so I, I love the approach, and I couldn't agree with you more. I mean, get your hands dirty and listen to maybe what another crew chief has to say or how other drivers are describing what the car is doing and what they think their fix is for it. I know the tracks are different. The dirt is different. They react different here uh, than they do out west. But still, that approach, I think, is really good. Yeah, I mean, tracks are different, but you can still look at what conditions are doing and how it's acting and kind of translate to what you might feel one time. That That might work, you know. It's... It's all about a feel and what you see. And if you're in that race car, sometimes you're seeing different, it seems like, than what you're watching in the grandstands or even hearing. You know, it's, uh, you you get to see the whole track at one shot, not corner by corner. You know, it's. So where all do you guys run out west, southwest, I guess? 
Uh, well, so this year with CRA, we've been running, we went to Yuma, we went to Paris, Santa Maria, Kern County. Um, I think that's about it. Did they, finally the Hobby Valley. did they finally close the one that was out in the middle of nowhere by the housing? Uh, Arizona Speedway? Yeah. yeah. That's gone. Yes. So yeah, what Arizona they, wise, we, we actually have, uh, we basically have Yuma, Arizona left. We have Sholo, Arizona, and then Casa Grande is the last three tracks. Wow. We got right now, which they're supposed to be building two more from what I hear, but until it takes traction, you never. Who built a dirt track today? Uh, I'm not a smart man, if you ask me. <laughs> it, it takes a lot of money and, it, you know. You got to have the passion for it. And that's just, that's one thing about Indiana. There, There's not a lot of that. There's not a lot of attrition with, with tracks. No, it's awesome. Coconut Speedway has always been there, right? Gas City's always been there. Uh, you know, all of the, all of these tracks that have been around for a long time and, you know, and then building out the track at Marion County Fairgrounds, which they had a little bit of a track there, but then, you know, they built out the circle C. So, you know, it, it is, it's exactly what you're talking about. You know, they, the, this stuff happens here and it runs here. So I wonder, well. I, I, I don't disagree at all who would build a dirt track, but there's a couple of places out there in the Phoenix area. Uh, like Apex is out there. There's another, there's another country club style racetrack like Apex, where you know it's a members club like the Thermal Club, where Andy Carr goes. That high end membership club where they have their own garages and they have a huge road course. I mean, we're talking about three, four mile long road course, so a lot of property there. And I wonder if it would make sense for them to add to something like that. Then you could see the business model working where it's in conjunction with then maybe it makes a little more sense. So might be something to run past those guys. Yeah, yeah. I, there is there is one road course. I, I'm not even sure where it's truly located. That's where one of the tracks is rumored to be going. Uh, uh, they're wanting to build, I think they their idea was a motorsports complex by the end of it. And dirt track was one of them. And mm -hmm. they had a bunch of land that they shouldn't run into any problems with sound or anybody getting too close. Like that was their goal, but... I think I, Apex is close to your neck of the woods on that southwest side, um, if, if I'm not mistaken. So, yeah, well, this one was out towards place. like Casa Grande, Arizona. Okay. Yeah, it was. Cool stuff. Talking about racetracks, talking about racing. That's what it's all about here on The Skinny. We have R.J. Johnson with us, and we'll be right back with more. Get in there if you yeah, want. Yeah, probably get you. Yeah. yeah. At least. A little bit of money, we can get you a ticket. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to the Skinny Ken Stout, Rico Elmore, R.J. Johnson, not Anderson, and the track dude <laughs> back here as well. So R.J. Anderson, if you're not familiar with him, the reason I say that is I've known R.J. Anderson for 15 years. He's a Pro 4 champion. His his father, Randy Anderson, is a Hall of Famer. He was also the crew chief for Ivan Stewart for many, many years. No, well, I'm sorry, Walker Evans for many, many years. So, um, So that's why... Whenever I heard RJ, I just immediately default to RJ Anderson, and and it was the wrong one. It was RJ Johnson. So I did a lot of homework and turned up some stuff that uh, RJ Johnson hasn't done. But there's a few different RJ Johnsons that pop up as well. So can we talk I, about things you so, haven't done? Yeah, we can. So the first <laughs> yeah. one, I get him in the truck, and I said, I said, by the way, um, I said I covered Speed Truck Challenge for a couple of years. I think it was 2004, five, six. I said, but it must have been before you. And he's sitting there, he's looking at me weird, like he's, uh, I never ran any speed truck challenge stuff. I said, well, I got you winning the championship 2009. What's so wrong with it? Hey, we'll put out the rest of it. We'll just keep adding. <laughs> so which, take it and run. <laughs> which I was going to, did you see who won the Xfinity race here? I did not. Oh, I did see. Uh, yeah, I texted his dad. I did texted, you see his dad? I the texted. Pit, you didn't see. I didn't see. Did I texted you see his dad, Michael, yeah. and the. Yeah, he awesome. was wound tight, boy. Well, yeah. and it was even for for um, for Stuart Haas. They were first and third, as, as I believe, right? First and second. Did they yeah, did they get first and second? Them. Yeah, because because it was it was Cole, and then and then uh, and then uh, him and Riley were going at it, and the next thing you know, Amarola comes into the play. Like he was out of nowhere in the twenty car, right? And uh, once those guys, those two guys, stopped jackal with each other, and he got around, he got around uh, Custer. He he was he was on it. He I was, was doing a, uh, <clears throat> but he I, needed that. He needed that for the for the chase. Oh, he, gotcha. 
he had he hadn't got a win to get him locked in yet. I was on the West Coast with uh, seven time champ Hall of Famer Ricky Johnson. We were doing a motocross race, and uh, yeah, we we flipped that on, and I saw that, and I immediately text Troy. I said, "Congratulations!" So, and I'm sure he was proud. He was it. he was a bit nervous. <laughs> I mean, he was up in that pit box. I a pit box one anchor, and I mean, he was. Going back and forth, which I could, I could totally understand. And you know, we've had some of those guys on here from NASCAR, and uh, for the fans at home, I mean, obviously our affection for Indy is associated directly with IndyCar, but it's amazing how important this race is to win at that oval for the NASCAR side of the drivers, Xfinity or Cup, whatever the case may be. It's a really, really prestigious win for them. Have you ran? Have you ever ran the BC? I have not. Actually, I, I would like to even just go watch it. Just watching it the last few years on TV, it looks like the most incredible event. The we we know people are going to get in there if you yeah, want to. Probably get you. Yeah. yeah. That'd be cool. least, a little bit of money, we can get you a ticket. <laughs> <laughs> we can get you in the cheap seats, the grandstands yeah. on the but outside of the track. It's yeah. so funny because you see the track sitting there most of the whole month of May. We're, we're over there, right? And uh, and you see the track sitting there, and it just has stuff inside of it where they store stuff and do whatever. And then we take when, we take tours there. When they so decide every to every time I'm driving somebody around. Oh, you show me. I take them around that track, and they're like, "What is this?" I'm like, "This is where the BC third. They're like, "What?" But when they groom it, I mean, that place it puts on good racing. Beautiful. It, I oh, love it's a great the race. track to it's, race. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's. And I mean, I get it, the size that they made it, but it was almost like, we just made that a little bit bigger. Do they have, not have enough space? No, they have plenty of space. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but if they had made it a little bit bigger, they could have done sprint cars there and wing sprint cars. But I think that was the whole idea. They they didn't want like a weekly series. They wanted a, you know, one one of these and one of those, and that was the end of it. A one and done Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it is special. You should you should book a, a trip, especially now with that relationship growing with CSI. Right, yeah. I, I, you know, get find yourself a ride over future. here. So somebody's got to have a ride, you know, and fly in with a helmet bag and hop in and go have some fun. Problem is, is anymore to run a midget, I feel like I'm a little too old. You know, they're about 14, 15 anymore, it seems like. and They get pretty sporty out there. Yeah, they, they do. That. They do. It's, yeah. it's not when I started at 14, 15, it was a whole different type of racing. You know, it's, I, I, I watch it and I always think, man, I'm glad I'm not in that race. You hear, <laughs> you hear a lot of veterans saying that, like these this younger group that's coming through right now. I mean, you got to be pretty fearless to begin with, but the other side of it is, is they're past fearless. Like they are no concern no, about money or anything. Don't Just care. Rip it. We're gonna go, and this is gonna be it. And I mean, I've watched watched him run at the Chili Bowl. I've watched him run midget several times, and and uh, but yeah, I mean, it's it's pretty wild. Great to always have somebody's perspective here from another area of the of the country, and certainly in that discipline for sprint cars and midgets. When we come back, we'll have more from Mister R.J. Johnson. Drill for uh, R.J. Johnson. Well, and his dad goes by R.J. Johnson. So the pit was got real confusing real fast when someone said R.J. This kidney is brought to you by American Coach. American Coach, innovation is our life force. And Fathead's Eyewear. Fathead's Eyewear, hardcore since 04. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. We're here at the Fatheads Eyewear Studio. This is the Skinny. Great to have everything here on our partners at Mab TV. We have R.J. Johnson inside of the studio during a commercial break. We were talking. I said, at least I didn't call you R.J. Johnson. Wait a minute, Ricky Johnson. And he says, no, I am Ricky Johnson, and my dad is Ricky Johnson. And he said, didn't want to confuse that with the Ricky Johnson and Off Road, which is the seven-time. AMA Supercross Motocross Hall of Famer guy as well. So yes, there's a lot of Ricky Johnsons around. Not a bad one to be confused with, though. No, never, <laughs> never. I mean, it, it's crazy when you hear the Ricky Johnsons and even anymore R.J. Johnsons. You know, it wasn't uh, 2016. I went to Knoxville. I drove for uh, R.J. Johnson. Well, and his dad goes by R.J. Johnson. So the pit was got real confusing real fast when someone said RJ. You can't even call him the last turning, name. <laughs> no, three of us turning around, you know. Was, what? Yeah. Then they had to change the name on his car, you know. It was, it was all there. So it was cool. 
Man, let's talk about your racing endeavors, dude. Um, we, we mentioned, we touched on your father being very successful as well. So how did it start for the younger generation of RJ Johnson? What was your first ride and how did it prog progress? I started in quarter midgets when I was six years old and I ran those all the way till I was 14, which at 13 is when I crawled in a midget for the first time. So my, actually my last year in quarter midgets, I was running midgets at Manzanita Speedway Saturday night, get up after the races and go race quarter midget Sunday. And then uh, that was it. You know, it was kind of one of those after a year of that, I won a quarter midget championship and I won the midget championship at 14 years old at the same time. And my dad's like, you know what? This is, the, the, we ain't doing this anymore. <laughs> so we ran one more year in midgets before we moved on up to 360 sprint cars, which I've been, you know, been constant in ever since. Um, but I, I don't think I made my first 410 start probably until, I don't know, 2009 ish. It was, you know, six or seven years later but is the cra stuff still 360 or is it four it's 410 okay yeah. when did that change cra has always been uh 410 um the west coast deal had a 360 series there for a while okay yeah that's what i was the cra yeah. was off of scra it was scra then it switched to cra probably about 2008 that's about the year i moved over to start running 410. Yeah, because I remember back in the day, there was a 360 thing out there because you would get, you know, one, you would go out there and race and you'd have to have a 360. Or two, they would come here and race and they'd have to have a 410. So yep. it was it was uh, a little bit of, little bit of a shuffle. And I, I think, I thought that they got that kind of all sorted out. But um, what are the tracks around you in Arizona? Are those 360s? I know ASCS is 360, so you you clearly ran those a bunch. Yeah, all the stuff in Arizona is primarily 360s. I, I There's really not a 410 club until you go into, you know, California, which is what we've been doing all year long, trying to expand our horizon. We had another new sponsor come on board this year, and their goal was to win the CRA championship. So um, that kind of perked us up a little bit, you know, because it's just my dad, my stepmom, at the end of the day, they're the the main funding for our team, and uh, well, who is that sponsor? <laughs> it's Jugo Superfoods, along with uh, Avanti Windows and Doors, which everybody in Indiana will see that around with Kyle Cummins and all that. Jerry Petty, uh, he's been a big help to us this year. Um, What's the Superfoods? What's that? It's actually like a a vitamin. Not uh, they have four different ones, you know, for like beauty and skin and uh energy it's like i could use that right no well you're pretty maybe your skin maybe my skin anyhow it oh, works sorry. good i mean honestly like i've i've never been a guy that likes taking anything like that but they're a gummy chewable vitamin that and i've like, tried gummies amazing. before you have tried those haven't you <laughs> like old bears <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> off topic yeah the gummy vitamins I, they used to give me those when i was a little kid yeah <laughs> eat the whole bottle you felt like you're super oh, yeah. <laughs> if they didn't watch it you could eat those remember those flintstone vitamins you eat the whole i'm bottle just thinking flintstone vitamins <laughs> when you said go so talking awful. about it i think michael still takes them yeah <laughs> were you a flintstones kid yeah yep yeah i what is it? Something a bam, bam. I I forgot the uh, jingle. If I think yeah, of it, I'll, I'll jump it's back. Something in. growing, <laughs> right? Yeah, uh, yeah. Ten million strong and growing. <laughs> <laughs> Some residuals coming your way, pal. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I knew if something is growing, I just can't remember the first part of it. So the superfood thing. How long have they been around? I've never. I've, I've, it's actually a new company. They're they're new, based out of I, I believe it's San Diego. Um. You know, because we had Avanti Windows and Doors on the card to start the year, and he's part owner in this Jugo Superfoods. And oh, okay. Kind of, I started the year driving for Jack Ailey out there, and that was where the Avanti relationship Jack. came. Out. Jack is still still going at it. Yeah, oh yeah, Jack. Yeah. So he's still fi fun driving for is Jack. He a little fiery still. Oh, he's fiery. He, he's a feisty guy. Cactus Jack. You got Jack that's feisty, and you got Judy that's a saint. You know, she. I love Judy to death. But, uh, but we started the year with them, and that's kind of where I started the relationship with them. And when things kind of went south there, um, he continued to move over with me. Well, then we went out, went out, and all of a sudden we were running good, even in my car with the Sierra deal. He says, "Wait a minute, I have a, I have a California-based company. What, what are we doing here?" It's like I didn't even know you had this. So 
all of a sudden that got moved over to the car. And I think it's worked good for them, you know, because they're in their hometown or not in their hometown, but far from their hometown where it's getting noticed. And I've had several people come over race by race, ordering the vitamins offline. And, and I was actually awesome. just, I talked to the other, the co-owner in the deal the other day and he, they're getting ready to sign in to go in all Albertson stores by. Oh, wow. In the next month, so they, wow, that's fair. They're good. growing. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, I think Albertsons really big in Florida too. Or nationwide Albertsons, or yeah, just na- in, nationwide. Oh, wow, that's awesome. Yeah, so it's growing big. They're doing a great job. They're good at advertising, and uh, you know that's what it takes. I saw that. Um, so you won it at Kern Raceway. Um, is that the same? I'm guessing. Guessing it's the same racetrack where they have the big half mile. Is it a half mile? Uh, high bank asphalt. Yes, Current it's timing? actually they're back to back from each other. Okay. Yeah, it's kind of crazy because you have the dirt track over here, and all of a sudden you look over and there's a big old mound of banking, and that's what it is. Oh, that place is legit it's, for sure. It's a beautiful facility. High bank like Winchester, Salem high bank. Um, it's 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 pretty steep. It's, it's <laughs> um, it's Irwindale bigger. Wow. Yeah, it's it's legit. I mean, it's so Davy Hamilton when we were running King of the Wing with with Davy. Um, we ran out there a couple of times and it was foot on the floorboard, wing sprint car, four tens, foot on the floorboard and let it eat, man. It, and it was, hey, it was a lot of stress. Way. There was a lot of stress on the, um, on the right front spindle of those cars. And when you run them that hard. Oh, I can imagine because they the banking and as fast as you're going. It it's was not, abuse. it was not uncommon for them to break. And whenever they break. They make an immediate death hook and run up and, I mean, smoke the wall head on. And it did happen one time. And it's sketchy. It's like, you know, people say to run Salem or run Winchester, run it up by the wall, and then you don't hit the wall so hard. But when you're running at the bottom and those wing cars could run around the bottom, you know, you're way far away from the wall. So when it when it death hooks and, and goes up there, you that, got pretty that good. That helpless feeling so, is uh, pretty good right there. Yeah, it's a, it's a fractions of a second, but, man, for the driver, it feels like eternity when that wall's coming oh, up. Oh, man, it's I can only imagine what that's got to be like. Crazy stuff. We'll touch more on his racing endeavors here for 2024 when we come back. Hey, man, he's only winning because he's on the pool. It's like, eh, still got to do your job. We're here in Indianapolis, Indiana. That is Mr. R.J. Johnson, who's joined us here on the set of The Skinny. Great to have him with us as he is in town working on a business relationship with CSI. Uh, we were talking about Kern Raceway, and obviously we, you know, my, my affiliation was on the asphalt side of that. So talk to me about the dirt side of it. Just as impressive. How big is that track? And you obviously went out there and you won with the 410 uh, with USAC CRAs. And I think actually after that win, if I'm not mistaken, I think maybe you had the points lead, but uh, subsequently you've fallen down to second, but still in the hunt to win that championship. A lot of racing yet to go. Yeah, we uh, the track's beautiful. It's the one of a kind, you know. You talk about the the asphalt track it's literally right behind it you can walk up the hill and see the other one uh the track was it was just a great night you know i'd never been there never even seen the place and it's just one of those nights that we put together perfect we went out set quick time and served six in the heat race and ran second actually got to the lead and kind of made a bad move and ended up running second but started six in the main event and had some luck fall our way with uh the guy that was leading but ended up winning the deal it was great you know it put us up in the points lead um you know ultimately here the last few races we've had a little bit of a struggle which is another reason like i say i come back here i want to learn because uh i think they figured out some stuff that you know it's it's my turn to get some homework done to get back on top you know we're only eight points out of the lead and we're we're about halfway through the year so who's leading now uh tommy malcolm is his name how long have you raced with him quite a while you know but he's really the last few races he's won the last three in a row i mean last three races three straight races in a row it's been amazing i mean which i can't say nothing i did the same thing back in 2017 i won three races and uh you know he's won them all from the pole i did the same thing so it's kind of one of those you hear everybody go hey man he's only winning because he's on the pole it's like yeah still gotta do your job earned his way to the pole didn't he yeah you have to earn it you got you still gotta be up there for 30 laps it's it's, how many car field we've been averaging probably around 20 ish honestly if Seems like Paris, we get about 20-ish, but if we leave like Kern and all them places, we got up towards the, almost getting to the 30s. 
Solid so, fields, yeah. Yeah, so it's a good amount of cars. How cool is it to roll out of the box and go out there and, and have a fast car? It's great. You know, uh, it, it it has to do with all the people behind you that can make that happen for me. You know, uh, during the week, it's uh, I do all the car maintenance. I have a, a guy that helps me in the shop with whatever I need. Uh, his name's Jinx. I'll give him a shout out in case he watches. He likes to do that stuff. Uh, but it's just at the end of the day, it's us two working on the car. So, you know, I got no one to blame but myself if something goes wrong. But it's cool to know that our program has been that solid that every time we roll out, you're a threat. You know, it's like right now we've been, a, like I said, a touch off, but that's fine. You're going to have those nights. We'll we'll build and come back stronger than ever. And, you know, the goal is the championship. We're going for it. What uh, What do you attribute the speed to? When you roll to a track like that that you've never seen, never been to before, you have no notes on. Anybody have any notes on it? How do you set up dampers? You just have a a couple of different sets of shocks where you'll try this one, you try that one, try that one. You, you just make an educated guess at it. No, I mean, you know, I've we have our Sherman race cars. That's they just moved here to Indianapolis. That we have they're kind of I I would almost say one off cars. You know, he don't build them. I'm the only one that has them. But we've built a baseline car that's been really good. Uh, even with the setup, we got a good baseline that it kind of seems no matter where we go, it's usually starting off pretty strong. And uh, I got a good good group of guys that keep an eye on stuff just as well as anybody of what's going on to make the correct changes, you know. Is night. that something that Sherman looking, uh, trying to grow the business and build cars for other people? Honestly, his main part of the business is quarter midgets. You know, he ran sprint cars, midgets, all that through the years at Manzanita, I mean, honestly, one of the greats at Manzanita, just, you know, I, I, my opinion, he was my childhood hero. So I put him up with Leela McSpad and Ronnie Schumann, guys like that of the day. I felt like he can, he could easily run with them. So his side's more of the quarter midgets. And at the end of his career, he expanded into sprint cars, try, you know, trying to build sprint cars as kind of a side well, I mean, and, if you're winning stuff, leading points, the phone's going to ring. I, I, I mean, I love them. I, I can't tell people enough that that's, that that's my car. You know, I get another one, and for some reason, they're just a little bit different. And my comfort level's been with him. You know, it's it's someone I know, and I was lucky enough. You know, all my cars were built. He was still living in Arizona, so I had a hands-on approach that I actually got to build my own race cars. You know, he was. He did all the welding and told me what to do. I was side by side with all the coping and every piece that was bent. It was, it's been a cool process. So not just a race car driver, a fabricator as well. Stay with us. One more segment yet to go. Want to get the skinny on other guests and different types of motorsports? Check out our YouTube page and get the skinny. The skinny is brought to you by Fatheads Eyewear. Fatheads Eyewear. Hardcore since 04. And American Coach. Innovation is our life force. Welcome back to the Fatheads Eyewear Studio. We're here in Indianapolis, Indiana. Another edition of The Skinny. And we have R.J. Johnson, who's joined us here on the set. Sprint car midget ace out of the Arizona region, out running USAC CRA here in 2024. Second on the points, so does have a win underneath his belt. We were just talking about that. Uh, how many races are left, do you know? I think there's like 12 left. Oh, a lot of racing. There's yeah. still a lot to go. Do you guys start later? Then? Actually, we run... I think our first race was in February, and we go all the way through November. Wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. We, one thing about we got out there is we got the weather that supports. You, you can almost go year-round. <laughs> a bit of a travel for you. I mean, coming from Phoenix every time. Yeah, I think the closest track we actually go to is Paris, which for us is five and a half hours. So. Not horrible, but, I mean, it's still a bit of a drive every time. So. It, it, yeah. It, what do those weekends look like? Uh, is it a Friday, Saturday uh, event or is it a single race event single race so oh. we literally get up in the morning drive all the way to paris we race and we come straight home like <laughs> it, it's wow. um, usually it's about a 23 hour that's day. brutal crazy it's it's long days you know when we go up to you know somewhere like kern we'll stay the night maybe a five-hour sponsorship yeah red bull <laughs> i'm a red i'm a red bull guy so 
Uh, that would be great. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So, uh, so a lot of success so far this year. Um, and obviously to do that well in the points, typically it's a consistency thing. So have you guys been running consistently in the top five? Yeah, we've had a real consistent year. I mean, we've had one DNF. That's kind of actually when we lost the points lead is we had a DNF one night that the track was not really great. And it had a guy throw a slide job on me and spin out doing it and took me with him. Um, so it, it kind of hurt us, but again, it's part of it. You get, that's why you try to be consistent and, you know, we've been qualifying good, which has been helping us in the points. Actually, it's kind of what's kept us in the points, you know, cause, uh, we've got two fast times this year, which that's more points, you know, it just, it all adds up, but the consistency has been the key. Yeah, um, the year we won the championship, Robert won the championship, it was a 3-2-1. Qualified on the pole, it was three bonus points. Second was two. Third was one point. And I think he qualified on the pole all but maybe two events or something like that. We ended up winning the championship by three points. Yeah. Qualifying points. I mean, exactly. it's, it's, it's a It's six big points deal, to man. be quick time. So it's six five four three two one. So, you know, like Paris last time, he wins the race, put him up there. But I was quick time. He was six quick. So. A lot of the saving grace, yeah. that right there, you know. It, it and it's awesome. That means you have to perform whenever you roll. I mean, obviously not practice, but when you roll out of the box, I mean, every every round, you know, that night really matters. Yeah, and like I said, he's doing his job. He's done his homework. Uh, they're good people. You know, he doesn't do anything crazy, dirty. You know, it's it's racing, man. We, we, got, we get your elbows up and dig harder. Yeah, the, what I like about, that level too is it's a lot a, a lot of the drivers almost all the drivers are privateers like yourself so money does matter and inherently what that means is they will drive you with a little more respect because they don't want to crash their stuff first and foremost and that helps you not crash your stuff so you know and, and it makes a huge difference because uh listen we're little guys over here trying to off road race and, and the same way i mean we we damage something there's a good chance we're not coming back the next week Right, yeah, it's you got to finish to you, you got to finish to make the dollar at the end of the day, you know, because that all goes back into our race car. That's what gets us back to the next race, you know. And, and is that the case? There's a lot of privateers with you guys. Yeah, most of, yeah. Most I everybody. actually don't even think there's. I think everybody that runs there now is pretty much owner driver. There's a. I think there's maybe two teams, like that. You know, have an owner and the driver separate, um, but. For the most part, it's... I mean, you can run up against, which we were talking about, I think everybody was kind of referring to in the midget deal now, where dad has is very successful and the kid is in the car. And Not well being successful. Could, yeah, ma, well, when mom is successful, that's a whole nother level. I may go IndyCar racing, but... <laughs> 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 no, it, it, and you're right. I mean... <laughs> Parents, you know, have done well in business and provide and, and, path for it. It's good for them. Yeah, good for them. I mean, I'm a lot of people, oh, ran a ride, all this. Listen, man, if I had that money, I'd spend it on my kids the same way. Yeah. Yep. You know what I mean? And I know you would. I mean, everybody would do it until they can't. But they, but the, I feel like those kids race differently. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, the, the thing is, is most of them don't have to fix it at the end of the day. That's true. You know, th they get to walk away and there's a whole crew that takes care of it. Like for me, that's not an option. I tear it up. It's going back to the shop and yeah. I'm the one that's got to fix it. And there's, there's no in between. <laughs> you mean, you know, just grab your helmet bag and leave. Nope. Nope. That's not, I'm in the truck and trailer going to the races. I'm, I'm in every aspect of what goes on there. At the earliest days when my son was running carts, he, if he came back broke or we had one mechanic and he would look at him, he'd say, we only have so much time. He said, we can either fix it or we can make it faster. You decide which one we're going to do. So you bring it back broke, you got to work on it, man, and it is what it is. Maybe you'll get back where you were. You know? Right. So great to have you on the show, man. Yeah, thank you guys for having me. Love you. the grassroots guys that, that are constantly digging, and you're making a living out of this. I don't know that we ever touched on that. Um, I guess you fall into the category of a pro whenever you look at I it I don't know that I'd be considered a pro, you know, but this, it is what I do, you know, on the side, I do some fabrication work and obviously now trying to get into the shock side, but even that it'll be, you know, my plan is kind of work during the day on my race car stuff. And I did my shock side and I have it at my house so I can be at home with my family and, you know, 
get away at the same time and go work in the garage. But <laughs> so the point is there's still a path for somebody that's not afraid to dig in. There, there, You can do it. You just got to work at it. Absolutely. Great. RJ Johnson here. Hope uh, hope you enjoyed the show. Great to have someone like that, as I say, in the grassroots end of this sport. Get them on the show. Let them talk about their experiences and, and how they're staying in the game. It's very important because there's way more of us than there are of those. We love the elites, but we really love these guys as well. Hope you enjoyed the show. 